draining out all the gas here. Y'all check out this stream though, man. What y'all think about that gas flow coming out of there? It comes out slow from the hose. Like that's how fast it's going into the carburetor when I'm throttling. And then when I take this fuel line off, got a better escape. I don't know, it might be the same. There's hardly no gas in there right now. It's almost empty. Actually, it's a lot of gas in there. I think I got like some blockage on my gas, man. Like I think this valve right here is no good. It's gotta be stopped up. I think it stopped up. Cause what I was about to do was, I was about to um, do away with this filter right quick and just run straight gas into the carburetor from the tank. But I'm, I'm now starting to think that this gas valve is a little bit backed up but I pulled it out already and it was clear. I'm gonna take it back loose today. I'm gonna show y'all. So I'm gonna go ahead and run all the gas out this thing one more time. And I went to the parts store, like I just got back from the parts store. Bought this expensive crap, 40 to one. about eight or nine dollars and I'm gonna put it in the tank and see if the motor does any better it's idling just okay it's, it's gonna idle it's idle like as soon as I get off the thing let the, the um the throttle loose it's gonna stay running runs perfectly fine at standstill I don't have no problems with it idling at all man it's just two days ago I was riding fine and then the next sun up it does the same thing from what I fixed just two days ago. Slow down on me. I'm starting to think that the Permatex I put on the intake, them probably broke loose. I don't know. Not sure yet. But before I go back to the cylinder body and the intake gaskets, I'm thinking now that I have a gas problem this valve and I appreciate most of y'all messaging me last night trying to uh, help me figure out what the problem is and one comment got me looking at the fuel line on this thing I think it was um outdoors dreadhead shout out to outdoors dreadhead man helping me out and others that's been helping me out as well but it kind of made sense to me and I just had to go ahead and attack it this morning. I even looked at it when I got back from door dashing last night in the car. Turned the car off and got out immediately and ran to my bike just to see where I got my fuel line routed at. And yeah, it was close to the, um, the exhaust. Coming from the comment I was reading, saying, I noticed that your fuel line is close to the fuel line. That could be, um, no, I said notice that your fuel line is close to the fuel line. But he said, I noticed that your fuel line is close to the exhaust and it could be heating up the, um, the gas, which makes, which makes pretty good sense, man. But I gave it a test drive this morning and it's still doing the same thing. But the carburetor was hot. The carburetor was real hot to the touch yesterday and the, the fuel inside of it was hot, meaning that I was going through, um, what they call it, vapor lock. So I'm, I'm looking at a lot of videos and then I'm reading on Google at the same time just to gain some knowledge about vapor lock, something where everybody was going through in the 80s with their vehicles, you know, like, old RVs and old trucks and stuff, old cars, 
old Chevy Impalas back in the 80s during the hot summers. You go to your your local store, you go in, get something small to munch on, you know, bag of chips, get some soda or something, you know what I mean? Just something quick, junk food or something, go back home. But before you go back home, your car won't start. It's hot outside. It's about 100 degrees. It was running just fine. And all of a sudden, it's just crank, 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 no start. And they call that um, vapor lock. So I'm thinking that I'm going through vapor lock on this small engine. Which I know I was because the fuel was hot yesterday and it was like 85 degrees outside yesterday. Felt like summer yesterday for real. It was a nice day, nice hot day. And the temperature coming off the exhaust was over 80 degrees as well. Made the carburetor real hot. So it was running crappy performance wise. Like I, I even um looked at my door dash because when, when I'm dashing, it lets you know what the speed limit is and it lets you know how fast you're going on the other side of the posted speed limit. And I'm looking at my bike speed limit and it's struggling to get past 27. And then when I get on flat surface, it, it will creep up to 33 miles per hour. And I know I normally get about 38 and 44 miles per hour going on flat surface. So I'm not hitting no speeds right now. So it wants to bog out with around 33 miles per hour. It won't get no faster than 33 right now. But I normally hit 38 and 40 on a good day. When the wind blowing, I go faster, much faster. So I'm trying to figure out, is it the gas or is it just going to be like a... Oh no, a worn out piston ring. I'm thinking about a whole lot of stuff right now, man, because this motor do have a lot of miles on it. Maybe, maybe I've done it where it can't really put in its work no more, but it's still able to start and do what it can. Tight. I don't know, man, but I'm looking at this fuel, man. What you guys think about this? See how, see how it's coming out right here? That's a nice little stream, right? Then when I put the hose on. Look how it comes out. Way less than what you just saw. But hold on, it sped up a little bit right there. And I look through this hose, man. It's not dirty inside. It's real clear. Everything is not stopped up. I mean, clogged up where the gas will be slowing down coming out this exit. But I'm just thinking that if it's not going to be my fuel line, it's definitely going to be still the way how I'm mixing my oil with my gas. And this is why I bought this today. I didn't want to buy it, but I bought it for one reason. Just one reason. And it's the only time I'm going to buy it. I would never buy this unless I really have to, man. Like, if I'm, like, let's say, um, no gas station around, but there's a park store around, and I need gas right now. That's when I would buy something like this. Um, yeah, like, the only reason why I got this now, just to indicate if I'm mixing my oil wrong. So this is 40 to 1 mix. And I'm going to put it in the gas tank and see how the motor performs. If it picks up its performance like I'm looking for it to do, then it's definitely going to be the way how I'm mixing my gas. Like you guys stated a couple days ago on my last live, I could be mixing my gas wrong. I really do think I'm mixing my gas wrong. It's just that, you know, I do know I like to put a little bit more oil into the gas because of my throttling and when I'm delivering on this thing. Just to keep everything lubed up and not drying out on me where I can blow the engine. But there's something going wrong on this thing through my own kind of human error. I know it is. And if it is, I'm trying to get it fixed. If I can't get it fixed, I tried everything I can. You guys was right there with me, man. And some of you guys was trying to help me figure this thing out, man. It could be the, sm the most smallest, minor thing going on with this thing. And you still can't figure it out. So what I'm going to do to fix that, I'm going to just kick this motor off man and buy another one the next motor I put on here you guys already convinced me to get the um 
Avenger 85 CC. That's going to be my next motor I put on here. I looked at enough videos on it, man. I think it's not going to be the best motor I own in my name. I think the Zeta 80 was one of my greatest motors I had. But it is what it is, man. I'm just trying to find a decent, efficient two-stroke motor to put on this thing to help me dash around. So I'll figure it out in a minute. Good morning, you guys. What you guys are up to this morning, man? I know some of you guys are getting ready for work. I know a lot of you guys don't have time to view a video right now, but you will later after I post it. And I just want to say, man, it's another good day to do something with your motorized bicycle. What we got here? What's up, Paul Gal? How you doing, brother? So I'm gonna run this gas out. I'm not gonna flip it over or anything. I'm gonna just let this thing keep going. You just got your 36 sprocket? Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. I'm about ready to be zooming around now. Oh yeah, you're gonna get around and you're gonna get there, bro. Get more top end speed. Your 30 minutes going to turn into 15 minutes, wherever you're going. And you're going to save more gas, bro. You're going to save more gas. That's always a winner right there. That's an A+. Plus. Thirty-two is low. Bog is at high. I mean, at low speeds. I feel you. I had a thirty-two once, man. It performed pretty good for me. Um, I guess it depends on how well your motor running as well. And make sure that um, all your, you know, your chain is not too dry when it's in rotation. Keep it lubed up. You don't want to gain no friction. That'll slow you down too. A dry chain will slow you down. Man, that's all she wrote. I think that's it. Ain't have much left. Oh, it's still a little bit in there. What that gas look like to y'all coming out? Is it too clear? Is it dirty looking? I don't know. You got a brand new 420 chain. Okay. All right. I need to check Amazon out, man. I'm not an Amazon shopper. I'll be on eBay a lot. Got it for 10 bucks. Wow. All right, I'm definitely checking out um, Amazon. As soon as I seen 10 bucks on there, it's worth it. I hope it's good material. Saw this dude going about 200 in a Dodge Challenger, bro. Police ain't even mess with him. You see stuff like that in the movies. He ain't even turn his lights on. He just went to the next red light and stopped, but the, char the Challenger was gone. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some fresh gas in there. I'm gonna run it straight right now. And I broke my new carburetor yesterday. It ain't broke, but I just need some jet. I need a new jet in it. 
I got a um, brand new set of jets on the way. I think it come with a, um, a 65, a 70, and I don't know. It's, it's a few of them, man. I never heard of that kind of chain. What's the, you said, uh, um, let me see, let me go back to it. It's a RK Tassel Gold chain. I can't pronounce that word. Never heard of it though. I'm gonna definitely look into it. This chain that I got on here, you guys, this the regular 415 chain. Probably the chain that most of you guys don't like, but guess what? I've been using this thing for two years. This chain is two years old and still going. So it's not an all bad chain, for real. And that door dash miles and miles on this thing, man. This is the second chain. No, this is actually, yeah, this is the second chain I had on this bike since um the last motor. The original chain that came with this motor, I gave it away to my brother. So, this is a two-year-old chain right here, man. Still going. 415 regular stock chain for your small engine on your bicycle. Still going today. Ain't popped not once. It's not showing any indication of where. But I am going to change it, though. I'm going to take it off and put a gold one on there. Oh, it's from uh, Japan? Okay. All right, so I got straight gas in there. Got this bottle on tight. Hopefully, this will make it run better, man. I get all my money worth every drip every drop It's expensive, brother, man. I'm not going to keep buying this stuff. This is only for me to figure out what I'm doing with my gas mix other than buying this true 40 to 1. If my bike runs any better, I just drained out all my gas and replaced it with this just to see if it's going to run any better. And if it does, then I know I was mixing my gas wrong and it, it's not making the engine run right i took the filter loose for now just for now this is temporary i love running it with my filters straight gas shot fill line is clear no build up no gunk in the line no oil 
It's a straight, clear line on the inside. I aimed it up in the sky, looked through the one side. You can see the sun on the other side, clear as day. But the next thing I am going to do is change this in line. Cause this the this the original fuel valve that came with the gas tank since I had it, and that's it's been about two and a half years, three years. So I'm gonna change this, man. I did take it off though, and I expect the little filter that's on it. It's real clean, but the plastic around it is like deteriorated. It's not to the point where it's like floating around in the gas though, but it's like hairy looking. Look like it's growing inside there or something. It's going through something. <laughs> Only thing I have to do now for real is start it up and see how I ride. I rode it this morning. I got to the parts store and back. But as soon as I got to the parts store and turned it off and came back out with that little gas can and tried to get back home, it was slow. But when I left, it was fast. It was performing just fine, man. Like, I'm still trying to figure it out. So it makes me think it's not a gasket issue. It's not the cylinder body. It can't be the piston. But I'm not sure I'm going to change the piston rings anyway. What could it be? I started up cold start this morning. Let it run for like three minutes. It was idling. Drove it to the store. It was performing perfectly fine. I got up past 30 miles per hour like nothing. I was throwing 38 going down to the store like nothing, man. It's like, okay, everything is here. This is what I'm looking for. Get into the store, come out, start it back up. It's running. Sounds good. But when I hit that throttle, it's like driving Miss Daisy. What could it be? I haven't drilled a hole in my carburetor box yet, but I need to go ahead and put at least one or two holes in it. I mentioned it yesterday I'm going to do it, but I didn't do it yet. But um, I'm going to do it today. Replace the air filter with Scotch brick. Huh, that's a new one. That's a new one. No, I understood what you were saying, Robert, ethanol free. I need to keep using ethanol free. Yeah, I heard ethanol free is um, the best gas you can use for anything, for real. Even for your automobile. Paul Gale, $50 from China, too expensive here. I have a gas station that sells ethanol free. It's only one here in South Carolina in my area. Luckily, I ain't got to drive too far to go get it, but I heard lots of people love this gas, and sometimes they got to drive 40 miles just to go get two gallons. They be done spent more in gas trying to go get. <laughs> wow. Ethanol free gas is that good, huh? Me, I personally never looked into ethanol free. I, I would just go to the gas station and get gas and keep it moving. But now I'm starting to look into it like, yeah, it's important to know what kind of gas you're putting in your machines. I believe that, Robert. They hate ethanol. The fact that they, that ethanol if you ask me, bonds with water and messes up everything. Just a couple holes is all I need. I got O's on my carburetor. <laughs> I'm 
I'm talking about carburetor holes, carburetor holes, holes, holes. <laughs> I'm gonna put one right there, one right there, one right there. Or I'll probably put one here and one here. I'll figure it out. Yeah, so I'm about ready to start this thing up, man, but, um, I got my headlights coming in the mail, so I would, I will be able to drive this thing at night soon. I'm still waiting to get a brake caliber for the front. I got new brake pads yesterday for the back. I hope I ain't losing while I was driving. This crate right here uh, normally holds everything I need, all the way down to my tools when I break down. Got my delivery bags, got my straps. And here's my new brakes I picked up yesterday for $8. And I go to Walmart, they almost $18 or something. I don't know. I forgot. I got to look. No, at Walmart, they're $12, $15, something like that. Um, I still got plenty of brake pad left, but I'm going to change it early. Change it early because I can see it's melting down in there. And I like to pay attention to this right here on my rim. I have no shears, but you can tell this thing been getting hot. You can tell it been getting hot. Sometimes I can smell the rubber burning. It's like a harsh rubberish burn smell. But I don't have a problem stopping or nothing, man. I just been keeping up with how low they get. Every time they get to a certain point, man, I change them out. I'm not going to let them keep going like I did last time, a year ago. Just keep on riding them down like you hear them cars going sink, 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 sink. When they trying to slow down, tear their rotors up. Same thing on a bicycle. You let it shear down to the metal, the bare metal, you're going to tear your rim up. And that's going to cost you, well, on this bike, it cost me about $80. So, $8 just to change your brakes and you don't change them that eight dollars going to turn into eighty dollars <laughs> just that quick couple half inch holes top and bottom works great got you my boy thanks for watching live brother at the no, it's not perfect because it retains water and it gums everything up, including the car. It literally reduces the life of the engine. Amen. Good comment right there because that's a fact. Rebrakes work great. I just switched to this and there's no and there's no old better. And no old better. I know what you mean, Paul Gale. I actually need you to remind me about that brake pad link because I forgot. I'm glad you reminded me now, but I need a reminder right now. What is that link, Mr. Robert? I remember, but I don't remember. I was actually trying to find, remember. I was, think I was trying to look for that comment yesterday. I can't find it. This was like four in the morning. I think you did tell me what the link was. I can't remember. And I was subscribing to a couple of you guys. Yes, yeah, send it again and I'm going to hurry up and type it in my phone. I think you said it was the e-brake. The the e-bike brakes that are more, more durable than the brakes I have now which is a good idea to look into because it'll save me money, you know what I mean? And let me tell y'all, man, um, I'm glad I got these hookworm tires, man, because that's saving me some money right now. 
I'm already over 200 miles on these things. And it looked like this. This is 200 miles later. And I just um, got these tires a week ago. Might as well say a week ago. It's been about six days, seven days. So I've been pushing this thing, man. Yeah, I got 200 miles on these tires already. I was just at 100 miles at least three days ago. Three days ago, I was at 80 miles. On them. Three or four days ago, I was right at 80. I've been pushing this thing, y'all. That's why I need to get a GoPro. Y'all going to see. Y'all going to see my hustle. Y'all going to see my hustle, man. I done got 200 miles, about to hit 300 miles. And normally when I hit 300 miles, that tire over there, this tire right here is 300 miles later from brand new. This is three and 400 miles later from brand new. It's a knobby tire from Walmart. And the middle of it used to look like this, but only bigger. All the grip is gone, it's like 300 miles later. So I'm paying close attention to these hookworm tires. And it's mainly the back one. I ain't worrying about the front for real, but this is 200, I mean, I was about to say $200, but this is 200 miles up front, and this is 200 miles in the back. And it's normally the back that goes up before the front. Look good, man. Hookworm. Hey, y'all seen it right here on Open Mind Entertainment. If you guys seen it on other videos, they're not lying, man. Hookworm tires is where's it at? It's where your money need to go ahead and be spent because it's going to save you a lot of miles and a lot of money in the process. Well, for my type of usage with these tires, it's going to help me out really good. Cool stop electric bike brakes. Cool stop electric bike brakes. Okay. Yeah, and it sucks just to have only one brake stopping this whole thing, man. The stopping distance on this thing is insane. So every time I get anywhere where I need to slow down, I'm already slowing down about a mile back. Just to save my brakes, man. I don't use my brakes till I get to the end of the road. Just about, I let the bike slow down on its own. I let the clutch slow the bike down. And then I use the brakes, but sometimes the hills around here is unforgiving, but they be, they be pulling. Sometimes I got to use my shoe. I remember it got to the point where I couldn't put my foot down no more. I had no brakes on this thing. I just had to ride and pray. Pray nothing comes in my way while I'm rolling. It's all good though, man. I never crashed this thing majorly where it's total, but I did crash it where I tried to get on the sidewalk one day and lost control and ended up hurting my toe real bad. I thought it was broke, but it's, they call it a stub toe. Still hurts right now, but not as bad as the first day was. But I'm gonna go ahead and start this thing up and see how I ride you guys, man. I am going to do another video. I'm always going to start doing more live videos now. I'm starting to get used to doing live videos. I'm going to get better. I'm trying to hurry up and get some other things going for some more content so you guys can view it. Appreciate you guys watching every time I go live. All right, the silver ones, okay. And I'm gonna remember this time, man. I'm about to go on there and at least put something on the watch list. Cause I already spent over um, $50 just two days ago for some headlights and they're actually a blinker system set up. So it's gonna have the headlight, tail light, and the left and right blinkers. I'm gonna put it on the bike. 
And I'm going to do a live feed video of that if you guys want to watch it. It's coming soon. Just make sure you hit the all notification if you don't want to miss out. But if you guys know about my channel, you will always tune in later. The videos will be posted. I need to take this loose for real. This crank. Put some new put some new bearings in there. Tighten it back up. But I haven't felt on me yet. I just know it's getting more looser and looser. I tighten it up and it comes back loose. Nobody likes this rag joint. I don't like the rag joint. But let me tell you. I put this rag joint on here. About 10 months ago. 11 months ago. About a year ago. And never touched it again. I don't even have to go back there and adjust anything. The only thing I'm worrying about is how low is the teeth getting on this sprocket. And I know how many miles I can get out of this. About 15,000 miles later, this thing gonna be low. And I'm not even around 15,000 miles yet. So. Oh yeah. And before I had to change this out, after all the natural wear and tear through mallets, I thought these things would never get eight down. Like, I'm still learning, y'all, man. I'm learning, and I'm documenting everything that goes wrong with this thing. That way I know for sure and how long I can go. The rag joints are all right to a certain extent. Depends on what you're doing with your bike. Like they're not good for bashing. Like they're not good for a lot of trail riding. But you can go trail riding, but you'd be the first one to break down if you were a group. You'd be the one that's gonna be broken down if you guys, like let's say if you go trail riding with your friends. Like y'all made it through the first day you went. Then the second day you go back through the same trail, you probably came out good again. Then the third or fourth day you go back, everybody's still good on your bike, but you're the only one with a rag joint. Your spokes finally gave up. You know what I mean? That's what's going on with the rag joint. It's going to tear your spokes out sooner or later. They're going to come loose. But right now, this been a good dependable rim. None of my spokes are loose. I haven't had this rim for a year yet, but I noticed that every time a year comes around, they start coming loose. And I remember that the, the guy at the business store that sold me this rim, he said, you're gonna be back in here less than a month because you got it on a motorized bicycle. I'm like, well, when I bought this, what was that? When I bought this the first time before I came in here, it gave you my business to purchase a new rim from you. I had this for um, more than 10 months. So this is about 11 months later. Now I'm in your store buying another room. He's like, wow, that's longer than I expected. Like, yeah, all you got to do is avoid potholes and don't go bashing and don't jump off sidewalks and stuff. Don't pop any willies. Ride it like a car. Respect it. And it respects you back. It won't tear right away, but you're still going to run into maintenance work any given day. But I like to say again, man, this this particular frame, man, the Bayside Hot Rod Beach Cruiser. Shout out to the people that made this bike frame, man. Y'all did a perfect good job to the welding. I love the stitches on here, man. And I've seen a couple videos where a lot of people welds would break over here, down in the middle, and up here where the fork is. I don't know. None of that happened to me yet. But mine's did break in the back over there. And that's like two two years later since I bought this bike. Three years. Everything happened to this bike about two two and three years later. So that makes me want to share with you guys on this channel that if you got a motorized bicycle and you just put your motor on it and you got spoke rims and stuff you don't have to worry about swapping them out for like miles and miles later for real go have fun
Go have fun. But it's a lot of people be like, man, be careful on that thing, man. It's going to break. Those are the people that don't know about these things. They're just going by what they think. They haven't ridden one yet. They haven't drove one yet. But people like us that have these things and ride them every day, we know a lot about them and how long they can go. Fun and dangerous. Got to love it. Robert Gunn, I tore my spokes up with a clamp. I even sanded the clamps and used a um, grub screw. They still slipped and bent my spokes. Best thing to use is a wheel with a disc brake adapter for the sprocket. Agreed is agreed. Yes, sir. I agree with you. Now, I was about to get a disc brake set up for my front. And I'm only going to put one on the front, not the back. Probably can't get one in the back. But I went ahead and tried this first. I went ahead and um got rid of the brake. I'm gonna get I'm gonna take this off here. This this was the front brake lever. I'm not even using this. I'm gonna discard with this. I'm gonna get rid of it. Take that off. Nothing's gonna be on this side but the clutch lever. And I went ahead and purchased this lever. That is considered to be double and i lost the part but there ain't nothing i can put another one in there so now i'll be pulling the front and the back which i think is a good braking system but i'm gonna see how it works out because the eight dollars that i spend on these brakes right now i have to keep changing them out like every two and a half months and it's been directly two months I'm right at two months with this so I'm trying to get rid of changing these brakes every two months to every four months maybe when I attach the front brakes on here I will have it where the front doing the most of stopping and I'm gonna delay the back where it just slows the back rim down like I'm gonna adjust it out where it does what does its job for me. I'm going to have the front doing most of the stopping, but not harsh stopping where it throws me over the handlebar. And uh, I'm going to have the back slow down while the front do most of the, you know, slow stopping. I don't know. I'm going to figure it out. Some of you guys probably know where I'm going with this, but once I get the new caliber here for the front of my bike, it should buy me some more time to save money exchanging these brakes out. I got a lot going on on this bike frame, man. The ideas are unlimited. Outdoors dreadhead. You run a hub mount sprocket on yours to protect your rims. Hell yeah, man. And you will go longer with the hub adapter. I agree to that. I already experienced it and I loved it, man. And you get a smoother ride, for real. Because you, you, you getting your... I don't know, it's like it's less flexing. If I'm not mistaken by saying that, it's like it's less harsh on your spokes. That's all I can say about it. It's less harsh on your spokes. Robert Gunn, when you get those cool stops, electric pads, you will be happy. Man. I'm already happy you sent me the link so um, I can look into them. So I would never thought about or think about looking into them if it weren't for your comments. So I appreciate it. You're giving me something new to look into to put on my bike. And Lucille appreciates it too. Man, I hope when I start this thing up, man, it's no problem. Like, man, it's early in the morning right now. It's still early, man. I'm not supposed to be dashing on this thing. And I've been delayed, man, because I don't want to burn the motor up trying to push this thing around and make work. But I drove it all day yesterday, man. It will not get no faster than 33 miles per hour. I'm, I'm so used to doing 38 and 40 easily on this thing. Easily.
but I may be aggravated, but I would not give up. I'm going to just do a part with this motor. If I can't fix it, get it to run like I want it to run, and just order another one. That's what I'm going to do. But um, you guys, like I said, already convinced me to get the Avenger, the Avenger 85cc. I looked at I looked up um a lot of videos before I convinced myself to go ahead and purchase it. And I know a lot of you guys out there buying that motor because it's out of stock everywhere I look. But I did find it. I found one that's only one and it's still available for me to purchase. It's just I'm not ready to buy it yet. I had to go on Google and find it, man, and it took me to another store that had only one left. Everywhere else I went for the um, Avenger 85cc, um, it was out of stock. Like, who's buying these motors, man? <laughs> now, look, um, I just took and looked up another YD100. They had more than 50 available. <laughs> like, I can get another one of these like nothing. But the Avenger 85cc that you guys mentioned to me, and it's a cool motor for real from the videos I've been looking at, man. Um, dude was doing like 50 miles per hour on a straightaway, like with with no effort. I wanna I wanna experience that. I wanna experience that. I think I um uh, subscribed to his channel too. I gotta get his name. I'm gonna give it back to you. I'm gonna um uh, I'm gonna look up his video and I'm gonna do another video of my own and I'm going to mention his name in that video so you guys can look it up. Dude was hauling ass on that Avenger 85. And his straightaway was no incline. His straightaway was just straight, straight shot. And he, he gave it to it, man. He, he let it have it. I love watching videos like that, man. It's amazing. The Phantom V3, man, Phantom 85, man, I'm still trying to get one of those, but those are, that's more expensive than the, the Avenger 85. I think the, the Phantom 85 V3 is still hanging around between three and $400. If I'm not mistaken, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think the last time I looked at it, which is not even a month ago, it was at barely four hundred dollars for a phantom 85 v3 outdoors dreadhead you got to have the brakes set more in the back because if you have brake hard um, all right, well, I set more in the back and less up front. I'm just tired of changing the brakes in the back for real, man. I'm, I'm ready to just hop on this thing and not worry about what's going on in the rear. But I'm always paying attention to what's going on in the rear of this thing. I hardly do anything up front. Like, this is my second tire on the front rim since I bought the bike. And I've been through like 30 different tires in the back since I had to bite 40, almost 40 damn tires, man. Like, it's a lot of tires, man. I threw away a lot of tires. To, every time the, the trash truck would come around on a Monday to dump the, um, you know, the trash, it'd be like tires falling out that thing every month. Waste of money. Hookworm tires is what's it at. <laughs> and I'm about to change from these rims to mag rims later. Mag rims. I got to try them out.
Robert Gunn. It is, but customer service is legit. Yeah, I like customer service with these small engines, man. They they normally cool with you, man. They listen to your um complaints and they they help you out, man, for real. So I wouldn't doubt it that the customer service is real good and legit. Robert Gunn. I get my stuff from Bicycle Engine Customer Service. Always hooks it up of if I have an issue. Hell yeah. Robert Gunn. For me, that's worth the extra cost. I feel you, brother. Hey, Outdoors Dreadhead, man. Once you mention about um, my fuel line being close to my exhaust, I came out here like 4.30 in the morning with a flashlight and I rerouted it. <laughs> I ain't test drive it or nothing, but I rerouted it because, you know what I mean, I had to think about it. I said, yes, yeah, it is close to the exhaust. It could be heating up. Then I started going on Google and looking up videos and started showing me things about vapor lock. So it made sense, man. It made me go ahead and tack the situation. And I'm still having problems today, so I went ahead and bought some expensive 40 to 1 to see if it's my gas mixture. If this don't work, man, I'm going to just say it's going to be the piston rings, or it could be the piston. Wore out on me. I do have another piston I can put in it. I do have other piston rings I can put on. I'm gonna change the piston rings first. But what I don't have is a lot of time for this motor. I'm running out of time. I'm running out of time because look what it's doing. It sits right here and it's not out there making me money. It, it's only sitting here having me spend money. And then the parts I put on it, it's like a BMW, it don't work. You spend a lot of parts on a BMW because you thought it was that part that's messed up on it and it still ain't the right part. I'm gonna put BMW logos on this bicycle, man. You have the fuel line wrapped in heater holes anyway. I thought it was a great idea. It worked out fine for me for over a year. And I'm just not running into these type of problems. So this this is a replacement hose that I'm using for my fuel line. You guys can drop down in the comments. Is, is it a bad idea? Is it worth using one of these? I change it for real. It's just it's better than that stock stuff that comes with the kit. It is better than that. And I went to the parts store and I'm like, man, I need a fuel line about this long rubber. And they were like, this how long you need it? Yeah, I need you to cut it right there so I can get two pieces. Here's my two pieces, one and two. One for the fuel line and one coming from the gas tank. You know what I mean? And I pieced it together like that. Been riding good for more than a year. This is my first time having a problem. Did you ever move the needle clip? Not a bad idea. The needle clip? No, I'm gonna move it after I take this test drive though. The only reason why I haven't moved it yet because I was trying to figure out if I'm having a gas problem with my mixture. So now that I already got the 40 to one in there that's properly mixed 40 to one, not a little over, I'm gonna see if it makes a difference. And if it don't make a difference, I try the needle clip. But if it does make a difference, I'm going to just go ahead and say it was my oil. You know, I was way off with my oil with the gas the whole time. But I remember um, you said two clips from the bottom. I do remember that from the bottom.
you could wrap it around your exhaust with that stuff, no problem. You have to fill line wrap and heater hose. Okay. Outdoor drag, where your back wheel is carrying all your weight plus driving all your weight for is always going to wear out way before the front, no matter if the bicycle, moped, or motorcycle. Yeah, fact. That's a fact. Robert Gunn, last cylinder you got was gas, so they sent a whole other engine, and you kept the other engine. Does the other engine still run? You got it on another project you get ready to build for it? I got a whole nother engine myself, man. It's a um, 100cc. I think, um, what's wrong with it? Um, I need another drive gear and a bevel gear. The drive gear with the chain goes on and a bevel gear for the um the clutch. I might have said that backwards, but you guys know what I mean. I need that gear with the chain sits on and I need the bevel gear on the clutch side, the small one. I think they call the big one a bevel gear too. I'm not sure. Robert Gunn, yeah, it's still good. Cool, bro, you got you another motor. You can start another project anytime you're ready. Cool. What time is it? It's 11 o'clock a.m. already. I'm about to see if this thing going to start up for me. Well, I know it's going to start. Let's see if it's going to perform for me and see if I can dash a little bit on this thing. I done spent $8 this morning, a little over $8, and I'm mad about that $8 being spent. I'm really trying to budget my money, man. I'm trying to do bigger things and stuff, man. I still haven't got my P.O. box, yo. It's a lot going on, man. But I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Struggle is hard out here, man. Roxy, get over here. Leave them cats alone. You looking for them cats? You looking for a cat? She's a smart dog, y'all, for real. She like to run this backyard, let them cats know she out here. You see, you see a cat? You see a cat? Go get it. Go get it. <laughs> she tripped me out, man. Robert Gunn basically got two engines for the cost of one. Hell yeah, bro. That's a win, bro. That's a win, man. I need to bring my other engine back to life, man. Start this other project, man. I've been dealing with Lucille for a long time, man. This is my one and only friend that I will spend my most money on when it comes to a bicycle, man. But um, She's ready for retirement, for real, man. It's been a lot going on with her, and I've been spending a lot of money to keep her alive, so I need a secondary, for real. It's always good to have another motor on standby, man. For real, man. I need to park my daily driver right here, man. I need to, when I'm not working on this thing, like door dashing, when I'm not working to get money, I can be on my other bike just riding around and then when it's time to go to work i hop back on this one i use this for work i use it to ride around i use it just to get through my day so it's a lot of miles on this thing for real 
Robert Gunn, you be riding right now, but it's pouring where hey, I got some rain on the way. So I think everybody going through a little weather change right now. You know what I mean? Just be safe out there if you're driving for real. If it's not worth going out, wait until the storm pass. You know. Robert Gunn, LOL. I like the dog. Yeah, she's she's very she's very humanist man she remind me of a human for real like she's reincarnated or something man <laughs> she be trying to talk to me and stuff man i don't know you can see it through her eyes man she wish she can talk yeah roxy she listened to every command come here she get her to turn that corner watch come here roxy smart dog Someone on a YouTube live said they like you. They like your name too. Roxy, say hi. Say hi to chat. You really trying to catch you a cat today, ain't you? And cat going to slap the mess out of you. That cat going to stand up on you. You leave it alone. You looking for it too. You looking for trouble, ain't you? What you see? What you see? What is it? Uh oh. Oh, now you want to play with the stick? You want to play with the stick? She gonna try to tear it in half and make it smaller. Roxy, come here. Come here. I'm gonna throw the stick. I'm gonna throw the stick. Let me go get it. You wanna go get it? She gonna bring it back too. Go get it. Good dog. <laughs> yeah, but that's Roxy, y'all. She a very happy dog. She has a uh, the, well, the yard to her looks very big because she's small, but she runs back and forth all day. She's very energetic. She get all her energy out in one day. She sleeps through the night very calmly, and uh, she got a lot of dog treats. She loves to be fed dog treats. She got a maid, man, and I think the big dogs on the chain, you know, she got a maid. I'm gonna show y'all something right quick. Give her a snack. Wait a minute, I'll be back, stay right there. She already know what I'm doing. She already know why I walk this way. Roxy, got your snack. I got your snack. I got your snack. I got your snack. Look what I got. Look what I got. Here. All right. Sit. Sit down. Wait a minute. I'm going to put this down and don't eat it yet. Wait, okay? All right. Because if you eat it, you don't get the other one. I'm going to put it back in the bag, all right? All right, now. Wait a minute, because I know you want it. Wait. She want it so bad, y'all. She looking at me because she waiting for command. Eat. And good, ain't it? And I got another one for you. 
She gonna hurry up and eat it cause she see the other one. This time I'll see if I can get her to speak. You want this one? Sit, sit down, sit. Speak, you want it? Speak, 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 speak. Good girl, sit, sit down. Wait, I'ma sit this down, don't grab it. Wait. She gonna wait for real, y'all. Eat. That's all you get to later. Her name Roxy, y'all. She's a very smart dog for her size, man. She like looking out the window and stuff and see what's moving around outside. And if she don't like it, she'll run to the door and then go chase after it. <laughs> it's funny, man. <sighs> Leonard, I wish I could run. Huh? Oh, okay. I got you, brother. Hey, mistakes happens, man. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, but um, I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, yeah, she like to ride in the basket, too, y'all. See this collar right here? I put this on, on her neck and... Wrap this around the collar. She can move in all four corners. She won't leap out. She will not leap out. She got plenty of room in here. I take all the, I leave one. I put like a mat down in there and take all this out and she have the whole ride to herself. You know, it's comfortable for her. She be hanging out on my shoulders and stuff. Not my shoulders, but right underneath my arm area while I'm riding. She don't leave the basket at all or nothing. She just enjoy the ride. She goes everywhere where I go when I take her. She loves it. You wanna go for a ride? Come on, go for a ride. Come on. You wanna go for a ride? Look, look, she know what a ride is. She wanna go for a ride. You wanna go? You wanna go? Huh? Come on, come on, let's go. Come on. Later we'll go, okay? Later. She, she know what time it is when I be like, you wanna go for a ride? She'll hop right up like this, and I pick her up and put her right in the basket, and she'll sit right on down. Let me put the collar on her, put her little homemade seatbelt on. She's safe to go, man. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, Paul, gal, cool, man. That's what I'm saying, man. I just like to take her places, man, so she can enjoy her life, man. Not just in the backyard, you know, she get to see the open roads too. She love to travel. And y'all y'all already know dogs love to ride, man. They love to ride. So yeah, she get to ride in the car and on the bike. I'm gonna I'm gonna get her some little glasses too, some little sunglasses, some little shades for her ride time. It's gonna look crazy. <laughs> chilling. You gonna be chilling, Roxy. You gonna be chilling. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But yeah, chat, I'ma holler at y'all, man. Yeah, she's a chihuahua, man. She's a chihuahua, but she's not full blood chihuahua. She's mixed with something else. She's a little bit taller than your average chihuahua. But she is a chihuahua, she's mixed though. I don't know what she's mixed with. I don't know what she makes with. I gotta take I gotta take her to the vet and see if they can find out for me. Yeah, she's she, but she's she's um very people friendly. She's very friendly. She will not bite nobody. She loves to be pet and she loves to be spoken to. She she loves to be noticed. 
She don't like nobody ignoring her. She'll get right in your face and be like, hey, I'm right here. Hello, hey, I'm right here. You can be talking to somebody and she wants you to talk to her. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get that P.O. box, man. I've been spending money on my bicycle, man. It's like I've been trying to make my bike happy, man. She's been taking my money, man. For real, so it's, I'm just trying to make sure she's good, man. That P.O. box is on the way, though, for sure, man. I just got to get this bike running like I need it, and then I can go. For real. But I appreciate y'all, though, man. I'm going to go ahead and get this day started, man, with a little trip around DoorDash and make a couple dollars. Make my $8 back plus. And uh, I'm going to switch over to a car. It's going to rain later on today. It's already getting cloudy. So if you guys getting rain right now, it's on my it's on the way to my area, South Carolina. They're talking about rain around 2 p.m. today. So I'm preparing for that. And that's how the cookie the cookie crumbles. Yeah, get her some goggles instead. Hell yeah. Nah, I don't I don't mess with the cats, man. They they run their own thing, man. They not as you know, a cat would jump out, man. I'd be mad as hell if I'm in traffic with a cat and it jumps out of this basket. They don't like no leash or nothing on them. I tried to put a leash on a cat, it did a bat flip on me and took off. What's up, Bobs? What's up, man? Welcome to the live, man. I'm about to end the live, though, man. But it's always good to see anyone join in. It's always good. Heading out, get that money. Yes, sir. You already know, man. I got to get straight to this money, man. I got to get straight to this money, man. But look, man, I'm out here doing no different than what everybody's out here doing. Every way you look, it's somebody out here making the hustle, getting to the money. So they can meet their ends, meet in their day. I'm no different, y'all. This is just me on my bicycle doing the same thing y'all doing, man. This is my job. This is my nine to five. I can't clock in nowhere, man. I can't. I just can't get up in the morning and go clock in. I want to be open, man. I want to enjoy my life while I make money. I don't want to. I don't want to be mad on the job because you know what I mean. I'm there and not making enough money, but. The money I make on a regular nine to five, I can make in two days than what I get paid in a week at a nine to five. You know, so if I'm going to make five hundred dollars in a week, I've been making six hundred dollars in four every four days. I've been making five and six hundred dollars every four days. Yeah. And that's DoorDash and Instacart together. So I love DoorDash, but I do Instacart because the prices they pay out on there is crazy, man. You can you can pick up an Instacart order. Four items, y'all. Four items. I'm not lying to you, man. I need to get my other phone going so I can show y'all this. But four items be $25 for three miles. <laughs> that shit crazy, man. And then once you drop that off, you get an $18 order for two items going six miles. I'm good with that. I just got a, a good amount of money less than an hour, man. Instacart. And switch over right to DoorDash and pick up a $10 order for two miles. I ride about per day on my bike when I DoorDash outdoor dreads head. Um, I do about a maximum of 70 to 80 miles a day with a minimum 60 miles a day. I do like 70 and 80 miles a day. I can go 100. That's if I don't, if I don't have my lights on my bike. I'm not going to ride at nighttime, but I normally been doing about 60 and 80 miles a day. On my bicycle, DoorDash, and Instacart. Um, 
It cost me $3 to fill this thing up. I just ran out today, so when I'm working on this thing, it lasts me about two days minimum, about three days maximum. But when I'm not working, $3 will last me six days because I'm just riding around but not working. You know what I mean? Like going to the store and come back home, chill, you know, not burning gas type mess. You know what I mean? But when I'm working, a full tank will last me two and three days before my next fill up. So I can ride all day for 10 hours straight. Let's just say 10 hours straight and I still got plenty of gas left. Let me try to make this sound better. So if I fill this tank up right now, which is not full, it's not full. I just put that 40 to one in there. This is not really no gas I'm gonna work with, but if I go fill this up right now and go work six hours, I'm gonna still have like a more than a half a tank for real. More than half. It's not gonna be near to E, but in the next sun up, I should be down to about right here. So that, that's going to be on day number two. So, yeah, about two and a half, three days on every fill up while working on this bike. It's cool. It's good for me. And I put 93 in here too. 91 and 93. I appreciate you guys hitting the like button, man. I appreciate it. I'm going to return a favor on y'all if y'all go live, man. You know, I don't know if y'all go live, but if you do go live and I catch you on video, I'm going to return the favor. I'm going to return the favor. And don't be afraid to go live, you guys, man. It's going to help your YouTube out. Go live, you guys. Record everything. Anything that makes good content. Be creative. Be you. I am being me. This is me. And by me being me, you guys can check out how many subscribers I have. And I appreciate you guys for being here. But this is how I have much of y'all on my channel. Just by being me, so be yourselves. Be 100% of yourself and no one else. <sighs> All right, you guys, man, I'm about ready to start this thing up and see what it does, man. I hope it goes and turn out great for me, but I will do a follow-up video. It's going to be like I'm getting rid of this thing or it's running great. It's going to be either or, so... I appreciate you guys for watching, man. Appreciate the likes, and I'll catch you guys in the next video for sure, man. He used a can of ethanol free pre mix today. Hell yeah, man. It's $5.99. Woo, 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 gas high. Hell out there, boy. Y'all got some high gas, y'all. That's $6. $6 a gallon. Oh man, cost 10 to fill up today. Man, where y'all living at, man? Where y'all at with these, high got, with, with these high gas prices like that, man? It's $4 a gallon for ethanol free gas there. Yeah, that's about the same here. That's about the same here. What's up, Luke? Welcome to the live, man. The live about to end, man, but you always more than welcome to view my next live and my future videos, man. Welcome to Open My Entertainment. What? $8? A gallon in Canada? Oh, man. Man, I thought gas prices was high here. But y'all gas prices is insane, man. I don't know, man. 
talk about not getting in my car to go anywhere. I'm going to walk. I bet, I bet just because um, y'all gas prices being so high like that, it's a lot of Uber drivers around. I bet it's a lot of Uber drivers around. A lot of people catching Uber in your area, man. All tax. Yeah, man. It's all money, man. It's 10 for two liters of premix, bro. For real. Dang. Dang, bro. Skip the dishes here, but dang, bro. For two liters, bro. Man. I never even paid that much close to that before a day in my life. Well, it's just eight dollars. It's about the same. Oh, premix can. How many of y'all out here, um, well, I'm not going to say out here, but how many of y'all ride your bicycles everywhere? Like, even if you have a car, you just going to go straight to your bike. Bikes are taking over for real, man. I'm, I'm starting to see a lot of people riding more bikes than their cars in my, around my area. So I, I know these bikes are like, I don't know, man. I'm about to try to get me an electric bike as soon as I can, man. It's just too high right now. Yeah, I notice a lot of people have cars, man, but they've been riding a bicycle. Like, I know a guy right now that has a Porsche. A Porsche, yo. You're a rich guy. And I stay around a lot of rich people that don't stay too far from me. He rides his bike everywhere. I see him everywhere, every store I go. I'm like, man, you ain't going to ride that nice car? Nah, no, nah, I'm just going to leave it in the garage. Ride it out. I'll get, I ride it every now and then, every blue moon. Ride my bike more than anything. I know. <laughs> Too expensive for it. Yeah, man. Yeah. I know. And I know it's a I notice a lot of people hate people on bikes, man. Just uh, if you own a car right now, you watching this video and you don't like bikes. This is not the channel you wanna be on. I had one guy, I, man, look, the speed, the speed zone was 35. I know I was going 35, 36. He passed me going like 50. And then I caught him at the red, the next red light. Before I could say anything to him, he cusses me out and take off. Like, what is up with the road rage, man? What is up with the road rage? We just trying to get places, too. <laughs> we just trying to get around, too. But then when I start recording everybody on their tag, man, it's going to be another story. You can't hop in no bike lane and start doing stuff like that. Yeah, it is expensive. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, man, right now, the way how prices is when it comes to gas, man, it's not, it's not a bad idea to have a bike on standby. It don't matter if it's an electric bike, a motorized bicycle, even if you don't have no boat, no motor, or it can't be powered by no throttle, even if you have to pedal, man. Get you a backpack and fill it up with some water that's not too heavy on your back and keep it going. You know what I mean? You're going to make it. You're going to make it, man. I done seen cars at the gas station twice in one day three times in one day and i'm on the bike and filled up once it's a lot of money being wasted out here man but if you get a bike you keep most of that that's all i'm saying man look the sky just got dark out of nowhere 
it's about to drop man hey if y'all got rain right now and it just lighting up in the sky we about to get everything y'all just got we literally about to get everything y'all just got i hope it ain't too bad Did you fit the old car? Yeah, the old carburetor is on there right now. It's on there right now. It's running good. It's idling good. No air leaks. I, I just got bad performance problem out of nowhere. And I know it ain't my gaskets because I sprayed carb cleaner around all the gaskets area, man. It, the engine didn't bog. It didn't lose power. It didn't cut off or nothing. It just kept idling. It didn't change no RPMs and nothing. It just kept idling. So there's no, it's no air leaks on this thing. I'm starting to think it's a gas problem and a piston problem, man, or a piston rings. It's funny when I hit 60 and a 35 and passed them after. Yeah, yeah, it is funny, man, but uh, I noticed some people like to be a-holes, man, for no reason, man. Those are the ones you got to look out for. Those are the ones you got to look out for because you're doing everything right. You're not, you're not disrespecting the law. you obeying the law. You doing everything what everybody's doing in their cars, which is obeying the law. And then you got some a-hole wants to come and mess your day up by doing something crazy from their cars. And they don't know that they're using their car as a weapon. So us as the bicycle riders, man, don't forget, we can turn these people in, but I haven't took it to that extent yet. I'm just trying to let people know as they see me on the road, I'm doing the right thing. I'm stopping at all traffic lights. If I'm going too slow, I'm getting out your way respectfully man but i noticed man this it's, it's nice people out here man but it you just got some some messed up people out here man they, they don't care about your life but they want somebody to care about their life <laughs> rain coming from atlanta i'm two hours away from atlanta right now so damn I bet that rain takes 30 minutes to get here from Atlanta. Then it takes two hours to get there in a the car. <laughs> you can hit 60. Use your income tax and order a Phantom 85. Hey, man, it's your money, man. Do anything you want. You, you got something you want, man. You know what I mean? How many times in your life, and this is an honest question, man, anybody can answer it, but how many times do y'all get up every day and always get the stuff you need, but you never have the time to get the stuff you want? This goes for everybody, including myself. We work hard every day to get the stuff we always need, but we never have the time to get the stuff that we want. Bro, if you got your Phantom 85 with your income tax money, it's because you probably been waiting to get what you wanted for a long time, man. And you always get everything you need. You need a break, man. You need a break. So that's your break right there by getting what you wanted was a Phantom 85. And don't be mad that you bought it, man. You're going to make it back. You got it, man. You got it. Have fun, man. Go ride. Post a video. Let me see it. I'm happy for you, man. I'm glad you got it. Man, if you got a video that you want to post up for content, I would be glad to see it. You got Phantom 85. I love watching Phantom 85 videos anyway. I'm just now getting on to the um, Avenger 85. But, yeah, man. Subscribe to me. I subscribe to, I subscribe to you and view your, your content, man. Post that Phantom 85, man. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Open my entertainment right here, you guys. Man, you know what I mean? It's, it's all positive right here. This is this the positive side on the channel. So if you guys looking for a good positivity, you come to open my entertainment, man. It's not going to be no trash talk, man. I'm going to listen to you guys. I'm going to read your comments, man. So, yeah, man. Go for it, bro. Phantom 85? Yeah, yeah. You need to get a camera. You have a few bikes and a few tricks and tips. Hell yeah, bro. Get that camera and post it, bro.
posted. I'm waiting for you, man. And I got to make sure that I'm subscribed to you so I won't forget to view that. Yeah. It's a lot of people that I've been trying to subscribe to on my channel, man. But re let me remind y'all, it's a lot of you guys, man. So I'm trying to go through y'all one by one and subscribe to you. And I appreciate you guys for subscribing to me. But yeah, man, Phantom 85, yeah, you got my subscribe. It's about to rain, you guys. Let me get my bag and stuff. I'm sitting here talking, about to get rained on. I'm about to get dumped on, man. Oh, man, my dad car windows are down. He's gone DoorDash. He already knows about the rain. He must know his windows are down. Let me tell my mom, tell him, call him. Hey, mom. Call dad and tell him his windows are down. Call dad and tell him his windows are down. It's about to rain. You heard me? Go in the house, Roxy. Come on. Go in the house. Yeah, if you got a phone, man, that's all you need, man. And before I end this live, man, I like to say something like this, man. If you guys are from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, but not the mid-2000s, not the late 2000s, but I'm going to just say the real early 2000s, like 2000 and 2001, 2002, but not really 2002, but I'm going to just say 19... 90 to 2000 in the 80s if you're 80s babies 90s babies and early 2000 babies but I'm, let's just leave let's leave the 2000 babies out if you're 80s babies and 90s babies and and your first job was like burger king it don't matter what it was jiffy lube whatever those are the jobs that we are so used to getting to make our money which is you know what I mean? Was the way of getting money the right way, legally. You know what I mean? But we didn't have cameras. We didn't have GoPros. We didn't have any of that. So anybody that's from the 80s and 90s, man, we're still programmed to to do what we normally do or what we're trained to do or programmed to do or what we were taught to do to get money the old way. And the old way of getting money is applying for jobs. When you can go ahead and get money the new way, and go buy a camera and stream whether it's youtube whether it's TikTok, whether it's a, a gamer stream and you know most gamers make more money than most movie stars you know what i mean so we didn't have all of that it was just nintendo playstation and you know what i mean none of those was online play none of those couldn't stream so anything with streaming access man you have a job you have a job that you have to work for to get that payment later you know what i mean which is me right now on this live i'm trying to work hard to get where i'm going later that's going to pay off and with that said with that being said you guys keep doing what you're doing man keep your head up never stop just keep it moving to get better, become better within yourselves, and you will get where you're going, man. Keep the Lord above you, man. He will guide you the right, the right way, man. And, yeah, we all going to make it, man. We all deserve to be somewhere. We all work hard every day, man. We all deserve a break. This goes back to that comment that I was just saying about the Phantom 85, man. If you bought it, man, that's because you work hard every day and you never have time to get the things you want. Let's have fun sometimes, man, and, and relax ourselves and do what we want to do and not always what we need to do. We got to enjoy life. Life is short. So, but don't forget about work, man. Always go back to work and get back to the money. You know what I mean? 83, baby, here, yeah. Yeah, we're getting old, man, but that's where the wisdom come into, man. We have wisdom, man. You know what I mean? And I'm 34 years old, man. I'll be 40 soon, man. I used to always keep my mindset that I don't want to be working when I'm 40 years old, man. I'm trying to sit back and relax, man, while my story is told. I just want to I wanna live a good life before I leave this earth, man. I don't want to 
I don't want to feel like all I did was work hard and got nowhere. You feel me? I'm going to get somewhere. Yeah. But now it's raining, you guys. I'm going to get up with you guys, man. I appreciate you guys for joining my live, man. Much love, man. Enjoy your day. Ride safe, man. You know what I mean? Catch you in the next video. Oh, yeah.